Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, God is our Father and the source of all comfort. When times are hard and things just aren't going well, there's nothing like a hug. Someone to put their arms around you and say, hey, everything's going to be okay, don't worry. And there's no one better at that than your mom. Just ask Nick Anderson, the Orlando Magic guard, missed four free throws in the final seconds of his team's NBA Finals game against Houston, and the team lost a game it might otherwise have won. Later, Houston guard Clyde Drexler beat Anderson to a basket late in the overtime. Nick Anderson had a very bad game that day. Understandably, he got home. Anderson was very depressed. My mom put her arm around me, Anderson said later. And she said, you don't have anything to hang your head over. You pulled your team out of so many other times. How nice it is to receive comfort in the low moments of our lives. In today's reflection, we are going to read a revealing and significant passage for our lives as believers. Paul, addressing the church in Corinth, wrote, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for our comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that our share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3-7 to Those words should resonate with us. The Greek word is parakaleo, which means to call alongside. Greek word that can be translated as advice and also as console, comfort, encourage, urge, appeal, and exhort, which describes aspects of the counseling process. It is the same word that our Lord Jesus used in John chapter 14 and verse 6 to describe the Holy Spirit. So it means coming to someone's side and giving them your strength. In life, God allows difficult times and tribulations to prepare us to help others who are struggling with tribulation. Verse 4 told us, He comforted us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4. If that is your role today, fulfill it in the best way. 
You are being a channel of blessing for someone who needs today, and God is using you as a vessel of blessings. My dear brothers, the truth is that God does not comfort us to make us feel comfortable, but to make us comforters. Some Christians are so self-centered that it reminds me of a story I heard some time ago about a guy named Sam who was taking a first aid class. One day Sam said, last week I was able to apply what I've learned in this first aid class. The instructor said, please tell us about it. Sam said, a few days ago I heard a terrible crash in my front yard. When I got out, I saw that a car had swerved off the road and crashed head-on into a large tree in my yard. There were injured passengers in the car, and because I had taken this class, I knew exactly what to do. I immediately sat down on the steps and put my head between my knees so I wouldn't pass out. Unfortunately, this is how many Christians feel about their faith. For them, being a believer, it's going to the temple, sitting down and soaking up the Word. Then they leave and just use what they have learned to make themselves more comfortable. But that was never what God planned for His children. When writing, Paul knew what he was talking about. He not only discovered that behind his tribulations the hand of God was manifesting in his life, but that he sometimes allows them to manifest his comfort to us, and also because he is instructing us so that we can be channels of comfort to others. How do we know that? Because Paul reveals it in the second letter to the Corinthians. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from the men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty, and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Then, beside all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 to 28. What selfless work is the one that you and I are called to provide? But Paul, saying that through all this, he has learned that God is the one who comforts us in all our tribulations. In effect, he is saying that he has learned that when he is sick, God is at his bedside. When he runs out of money, God is there with him in his poverty. When he is hated and despised, God is by his side. And even when he walks through the valley of the shadow of death, God is present, taking him by the hand, accompanying him, and leading him. This want to influence us only one thought, and that is that no matter what we are going through, God is there by our side and never abandon us. Even if you think that you are alone in that difficult moment you are going through, it is not so. God is by your side. Close your eyes and feel His presence. He is there giving you encouragement to cope with that difficulty. What happened is that many times the light and radiance that surrounds the presence of God, many times the enemy tries to overshadow it so that you despair and feel that you are alone. And instead of looking at the radiance of His glory, you lower your head and look to the ground. 
you are never alone. If your heart belongs to God, in the end, the glory of God will illuminate your life and your path. Look up. Later in the chapter, Paul writes, We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely on God who raises the dead, and He did rescue us from the mortal danger, and He will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in Him, and He will continue to rescue us, and you are helping us by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for our safety. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 to 11. We don't know what terrifying and painful event Paul is describing in verse 8. He says it was so painful that he thought he wouldn't make it out alive. Paul framed his despair in memorable terms because the words translated from the Greek are burden beyond measure. Flipsis were used to describe an overloaded ship running low in the waters or when a pack animal succumbed miserably under its load. It literally means to be crushed. Paul had multiple life-threatening experiences through his life as a believer. Each bring him to the brink of death. Dangers and shipwrecks multiplied. But listen to me, none had crushed him more than what happened to him in Asia. This is how he described it himself. I don't even want to imagine, since he omitted it. God was in each of his sufferings giving him comfort. Paul, with conviction and security, proclaimed at the end of his days and before his death, As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. Evidence suggests that the death of the Apostle Paul occurred after his fifth missionary journey around A.D. 67. He was arrested in Rome, and it is universally accepted that he was martyred and beheaded. Because Paul was a Roman citizen, unlike Peter, he was protected from the brutal death of crucifixion. Don't you think he knew for sure from his own experience that God is the source of all comfort? Although what I am going to mention to you was written more than a century ago, 1893, an excerpt from the Sermon of the Princeton Theologian B. B. Warfield, imitating the Incarnation. He said, Christ was brought into the world by his love for others to forget himself in the needs of others, to sacrifice himself once and for all on the altar of sympathy. Self-sacrifice brought Christ into the world, and self-sacrifice will lead us, his followers, not away from men, but in their midst. Wherever men suffer, there we will be to comfort. Wherever men strive, we will be there to help. Wherever men fail, there we will be to elevate. Wherever men succeed, there we will be to rejoice. It means that all the experience of men will hurt our souls, beat and whip these stubborn hearts of ours to fit them to their heavenly home. My dear friend and brother, sufferings and tribulations are part of life that we as human beings have to face. 
There is no human person who does not face difficulties. You and I, as children of God, have the promise of divine comfort. Paul experienced it firsthand, and he himself served as a comfort to many in the church. Let us face it with dignity and courage, trusting that God is by our side. And if by our side there is someone who is suffering and we can be of help, let us do it. God expects us to share the comfort we receive. Heavenly Father, Creator of heaven and earth, and author of our life, today we approach to implore you to fill us with your peace, to provide us with your comfort in the difficult moments of our lives. We want you to instruct us to share and bring comfort to those who are going through difficult times right now. Wherever they suffer, there our prayers reach and they feel comfort in their life. We implore you in humility and with prayer through the inexhaustible merits of the Son of your love, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.